This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Mastin versus Walls. You all have known each other for 20 years. You've been together for five years. But this relationship is on hold right now because you believe Mr. Walls is cheating. Is that correct, Ms. Yes, Mastin? Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Walls, you know, how do you feel knowing that your relationship all depends on what happens here today to determine whether you're cheating or not? I'm okay. I I'm not cheating. I'm here to prove that I'm not. So I think everything is going to be fine after the results are back and, uh, you know, and she finds out that I'm not. I haven't uh -huh. told any lies. I haven't seen any other women. So, you know, that's my story. <laughs> you know, they can win it. So, Ms. Mastin, tell us what's at stake here today. Well, Your Honor, um, I, I've been withholding sex from Mr. Walls for, for a few months now. Um, I kind of came up, come up with excuses when, when he tries and stuff, like I don't feel good or, or things like that. And are you doing this because you believe he's cheating? I do. I, I, for, so, me, for me, just imagining Dave with some other woman is a real big turnoff for me. So I've been having problems with that. And so you've been saying what? When he approaches you, how do you deflect? Um, I, I don't feel good. I have a headache. Um, it's the time of the month. Anything. You're just pulling them all out. All of them. <laughs> all, all the all classics. The tricks. Yes, I got a headache. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Walls, I mean, how has it felt, you know, her withholding sex? Did you know she was withholding sex? Uh, yeah, uh, I just thought she was, uh, sick, you know, and, and I, I don't know. So you, you know, thought she was sick? It, it was, it was bad, you know? Whatever I, I excuse... Trying, whatever you know, excuse... It wasn't working. Whatever <laughs> excuse she gave you, you believed it at the time? No. No, I knew something was wrong. I, I just couldn't get it out of her. She'd never tell me. Okay. How long has it been that you all have not been intimate? Uh, it's a few months. More, more than three months? Yes. More than three months? That's a lie. Yes. That's a lie. Okay, you're saying it, it's been about three months. It's maybe. Uh, three months is probably even exaggerating a little. So. Are y'all in the same bedroom? Are y'all yeah, sleeping in the same bed? We are. We do. We sleep in the same bed. I just kind of keep my distance and, um... Come to find out, I that's did. a big bed. <laughs> well, I mean, we 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 was ha we went from having sex a, a couple times a week when we first got together um, to not having any for for maybe maybe three months. I mean, how does it feel to be rejected? Do you love her? I mean, what yes, are you I love feeling? Her. It, it feels bad. It makes me feel really bad to be rejected. You know. And to be and constantly keep asking just her what's her going on, what's going on. You, you, you're not feeling me anymore. What's going on? And she's no, it's okay. I are saying her, still attracted to me. And and she's just saying it's okay. Oh uh, yes, I am. I just don't feel good. So so now that you found out that the reason she was withholding wasn't because she just wasn't attracted to you or she wasn't feeling well. She was withholding sex from you because she thought you were cheating. Right. How does that make you feel? I don't know. I wasn't cheating. I mean, she's constantly accusing me of it, but I wasn't. I, ne I never have. I can't convince her any, of any difference. So, I mean, hopefully this test they did proves, you know, otherwise. It should. This has got to be pretty horrible for your household. What is it? Yeah. Is your household cold now because you all are not together in that way? It, it's, it's put, it's put a, a strain on us. It, it really has. I um, love paper. I always have, and I always will. You know, I hope we can work things out to continue our relationship. Yeah. How do you end up in my courtroom? How does this happen? What made you believe that he's cheating? D Dave ended up in the hospital and had to have surgery. He ended up laid up in the hospital for uh, like two months. And I, I wouldn't come and visit Dave until after the visiting hours because I had to take care of things at home. So a after visiting... Wait, he's in the hospital for two months? Yeah. What happened? He had to have uh, surgery on his back, on his spine. His spine almost collapsed. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, um, I go up after hours and, and visit with him. And there was one particular day that stands out that a nurse, I, I just got in there and a nurse comes walking by the door and kind of backs up and looks over at me and said, I thought you just left. And then kind of looks at Dave like maybe she had said something wrong. Stuck her foot in her mouth. You know? Oh. Um, so that kind of, kind of was like, what was that about? You know? So, okay, wait. You come in and the nurse says to you, I thought you just left. 
and you're looking at her because you just got there. I just got there. So somebody just left. So something on your face. And so did she look at you crazy or did she look at she, him crazy? After she kind of said, I thought you just left. And then she looks immediately at Dave. And I don't know if I maybe missed a look from Dave to her or her to him or whatever. And then she says, wrong room and, and walks on. So I'm like, there's okay. something not right. Mr. Wall? Uh, who was it that just left your room right before Miss Masson got there? It was a family member, and I, I told her that. She knows that. She knew they were coming to see me. It was the only people that came to see that me was, was her and family that. members. That was it. I think he's lying. Did he yeah. tell you who the family member was? Yes. Do you resemble the family member? No. Is that a mistake that a reasonable nurse could have made? No. Not no. I don't. Nothing like her. And no. this family member, you don't believe that's who came to visit Mr. Wall? No, I believe she came, but I don't believe it was then. Okay, so you... A couple days before then. Ah, so you said, okay, if it was a family member, it wasn't the night in question. Exactly. So what have you experienced lately that makes you believe that you've gone from this suspicion, this thing that caught your eye, to something that's actually happening? Okay, so um, he's just now able to start getting back to work in the last few months. And okay. um, with my experience in him working before and now, it's is a little different. Um, okay. He, he doesn't answer his cell phone while he's at work. He doesn't answer the phone calls that I call. Doesn't answer text messages. And then, he, and then it's here lately. He's coming home later and later and later. You know, everybody has a cell phone on them while they're at work. Everybody. Well, let's find out from him, Mr. Walls. Why are you not answering your phone? Why I are you coming home in later truck. and later? I, I never take it with me. I'm up and down ladders. I'm on roofs. I, I don't take the phone. I've dropped a couple phones and broke them, and it cost me a bunch of money replacing them, so I don't take the phone out of the truck with me. I'd leave it there. She knows that. Okay. So I don't answer the phone all day, and I won't, and I'm not going to. Okay, but let me ask you this. Is this different from that in the past? Did he take his phone? Did he answer? Did he answer calls and texts? When we first got together, he did. Okay, at some point he stopped. Was it after the surgery or before? Um, well, he had been out of work for a while, so I, I, I'm going to guess I noticed it after the surgery. After the surgery. When he just went back to work. And that's one of those things people talk about. Either the person stops responding... Yeah. ...or they're responding, but it's never to me. It's, they're on the right. phone, but it's right. not with me. Right. Okay. Right. So, Mr. Walls, did we have this drastic change from before and after with your uh, I don't answering the so. cell phone? I don't think so. I think she's exaggerating. I really do. I, I don't think there was no change at all. I've always left my phone in the truck. And, and since I broke a few of them and I had to replace them, I just left it there. And oh. she knows that. I would call her back when I got to the truck. Yeah. Now, that explains the phone. What about you coming home late? She says you're coming home oh, well, late. Well, sometimes I got people's windows and doors out of their house. I got to get them back in there before I leave. You know, I just can't leave their house open all night. So a lot of times that's what I'm doing. I'm finishing up a job. I have to. You say a lot of times. What about the other times? Because I think that's what Ms. Mass was concerned about. There was no other about. times. <laughs> well, and I think... What other times was there? So. Where are you and who are you with? That's huh? usually what he tells me. He's, he's, he can't leave people's houses open yeah, or their roof remote, open yeah. or that's always what, that's always his, ex his excuse. I don't, I don't drink or anything like that. I don't go to bars. You know, I, when I leave the job, I go straight home. So you're or saying... Or sometimes I may go to a, a construction, you know, place to pick up supplies for the next day or something like that, you know, and then home. But I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not seeing anybody. Else. But the bottom line, Mr. Walls, is nothing's happening. You're just a working man. Right. And you're coming home are either taking care of business. Right. You know what, love? It, what I, but what I'm sensing is just a lack of communication between the two. Do you all talk to each other? What I, kind of... I question him when he, when he finally does show up and come home. I question him, and he says, I, I'm on his nerves. <laughs> I, I'm accused of... You heard her answer, did, right? Yeah, I did. Look, <laughs> you asked, do you all talk? She I says, said, I question... No, do you all communicate? Right. Do you all talk? He I'm... says, I question him when he comes home. There's a difference between communication and interrogation. Yeah. yeah. And, and so if you're interrogating him... Yeah, you're getting answers, but you're not having the connection that's required for communication. Okay. And when you're communicating, you're like, love, I don't know what's going on. Talk to me about your work schedule. As opposed to, where you been? What you doing? <laughs> Why you late? That's right. a different flavor, right? Right. Okay. Because he's All going right. into shutdown mode yeah. at that point. And Immediately. That's exactly does. what he right. does. Right. So have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Okay, Your Honor, so we, we share a car together and he takes it sometimes by himself and um, I found a hair tie in it. This hair tie. A big, bulky hair tie. And okay. that's not the kind that I use. I've never used. I use this kind. Okay. And you're trying to figure out whose tie is Where that? Where did it come from? It's not mine. It has nothing to do with me. I've never used that kind. I just don't. 
Mr. Walls, whose hair tie is that? I have no clue. The car was never cleaned out when we, we bought it. We never, I never cleaned the car out. So I, I don't know where it come from. It was either under the seat, came out from under the seat. I, I don't know. And you, you don't need a hair tie looking no, at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't need a hair tie. <laughs> so when you asked him about it, what did he say? Just that. It, it had to have already been in the car. It's not nothing that he did. And, and you're I, just like, but that's just, just another layer. It's just all of a sudden there. Yeah. So, so have you discovered anything else that makes you believe that I there's a, a, something amiss? I have. Okay. I have also found a little cheap fake nail oh. that was in the car. And as you can see, I have real nails. I don't use these cheap things. And so what did you say to Mr. Walls? Like, whose again, nail is this? Again, I take, him, I take the nail to him. Where did this come from? And again, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. Okay, Mr. Walls, I, I might can give you the hair tie, but <laughs> come on, now you got fake nails in the car? Pop I mean, it up. Same thing. Yeah, the car wasn't cleaned out. It, it had to bend in there. It, it's not from any other woman. I, you know. but, but why all of a sudden? I mean, you all had the yeah. car for a while before these things we started appearing. We didn't have that long. We didn't have that car that long. But why? I never they... cleaned it out. I know she did. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no. No, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I, Mr. Cullen, I think we got enough right here. I think we got Hold enough. Hold on a second. Let me, let me think about this. To think he's cheating on you now, how does that make you feel? It, it hurts. It doesn't feel good at all. Um, because he, he, he used to tell me all the time that he loves me. And, and we used to be real intimate. And we talked, communicated. I know a lot of it's me because I feel that he's cheating and I'm blocking a lot of it. But it doesn't feel good at all. I would love to find out that I'm completely wrong. And, and get it back together. You need to have this block moved out of the way yes. so that you all can move forward. Yes, ma'am. And I guess, Mr. Walls, you, you got to feel the same way. If you say you're not cheating... Right. Yeah, I do. Yeah, every, every day, you know, yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Are you not attracted to me? Because he's not, you know, like it was in the beginning at, at all. So, yeah, I, I would like to get everything out in the open and move on and, and try to, you know, I love April. I want to stay with April. I'm and, 51 years old. There ain't another one. And, <laughs> and you're trying to figure out how many different ways can I tell you I'm not cheating? It's right. got to be frustrating to you yeah, at some point, right? Exactly, yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Cullen, I think we got a good idea what it's like in their household. You okay. got, I mean, it's, it's clear they're not communicating. She's not communicating because he's coming home late. She thinks he's doing something other than working. He's disappeared and won't answer his phone. She's found these women's uh, articles in, his, in the car, the scrunchie and the fake nail. So she's like, with all of these things happening, and they've just recently started, for those reasons, she thinks he's cheating. And she's like, I can't continue this way. And he's equally frustrated, wanting to prove his innocence. Exactly. Well, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine is he cheating. <laughs> Ron, <please> just <laughs> start with the Wolf Guy Wolf. Good day, Mr. Wolf. How are you? I'm well, Your Honor. How about you? Doing well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Would you explain, please, what forensic voice analysis is? Yes, sir. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies in your voice, like on a radio. And when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. Forensic voice analysis works by measuring those frequencies. I can then look at a chart, and I can determine where somebody's being deceptive. And you conduct this examination by asking a person a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. And you ask Mr. Walls a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Let's take a look at the first question you asked him. Did the hair tie that was found in Ms. Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Let's take a look at the next question. Did the fake fingernail that was found in Miss Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. What did the voice forensic analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Is that somewhat of a smile? It is, it is. That's a good sign. There was one more question, correct? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at that question. Since getting back together with Ms. Maston five years ago, 
Have you had physical sexual contact with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Okay, you look like you're about to cry. I am. It's okay. I'm so... How do how do you all feel knowing that this this I'm glad it's, impediment I'm glad it's is gone. out in the open and now she knows that, that I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we were here to help you with that. And Ms. Masson, how are you feeling right now? Um, maybe this big because I accused him, but I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to know the truth. I really am. Um, I miss him. I miss the way we used to be a lot. So I hope we can get back there. So I, <laughs> you won't have any more headaches anytime soon, will you? No, ma'am. No. All right. <laughs> no more excuses. No more excuses. Well, here's the thing. We have Dr. Jeff here. He's going to talk to you, give you some tools to work through those issues. I think you're going to be OK. And as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, healthy relationship. Court is adjourned. <laughs>